Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am back out in the shed again. It's a little bit of a warm, misty day out. And there's another bike out here in the shed. But uh, finally, this bike is not mine. I'm uh, going to attempt to fix it for a friend of mine. He um, bought the bike a while ago. This bike hasn't ran and God knows when. It has a lot of electrical issues going on. Like it has no spark. Other than that, it probably would run. But um, we're going to have to go through this wire harness completely. Because you can see there's stuff hanging off it. and Definitely need some attention on the electrical to see if we can figure out the spark issue. But I like uh, working on these old bikes because uh, they're really fun to drive. And um, these bikes, like, as long as you take care of them, like, they can last a really long time. Plus, it's nice to uh, see these old bikes hitting the trails again. But anyways, uh, I guess this will be one of my uh, how-to videos. How to troubleshoot Spark and how to try to get Spark back into your bike. So, we'll go through everything. These bikes are not too complex. There's basically, a, on the 200Es, 200Ms, the bikes that actually have an onboard battery. They're not too complex. It basically just has three circuits, right? It has uh, the ignition circuit for your spark plug, like it actually uh, makes a spark for your spark plug. And they have a charging circuit, and they have an uh, electric start circuit. So, um, we know around the bat, the ignition circuit's definitely got some issues. There's no actually uh, ignition in the bike. It does have a harness. And uh, aside from that, I'm not sure if it has a battery. I guess we'll find out in a minute. But, um... The main thing I like to always do is uh, get a copy of the, the wiring diagram for whatever bike I'm working on because it, it's always easier to have like the proper reference to read the diagram. But yeah, we'll go through all that now in a second here, so stay tuned and hopefully you guys enjoy this. I like taking any uh, any challenge that comes if it comes forth or any new opportunity to learn something else. So let's do it to see if we can figure out this issue. So um. To figure out uh, any electrical issues, two things you're always going to want, like you know, you're going to want a um, multimeter and a test light. They're basically your two best friends for pretty much almost almost any electrical issue. You don't need a, as fancy meter as this. I bought this years ago and um, when I came out of college and it served me well. And I've had this one, this uh, test light actually given to me. Um, the clip right here is broke. But it still serves as a purpose, it still lights up if you create a circuit with it. So if you got a multimeter and a test light, that'll be handy. You can often get these on sale for 20-30 bucks. Uh, not, not the fluke one like this, but uh, a cheaper one. And usually that's all you need. Okay, you can see here guys, I have a copy of the wiring diagram for a 200E. And um, a basic rundown on the, the 200E, 200M. Is that they have like the onboard battery so they have a couple circuits as the main circuits and then that's pretty much it they have um, your ignition circuit that makes your spark they have a uh, battery circuit which often means that you have um, electric start where's that do there it goes you get your start starter push button so you got your ignition circuit you got your starter motor circuit electric start circuit you got the headlights and that's pretty much it really your main circuits so we're mainly focused on the ignition circuit right now because we have no spark. And um, how these electrical circuits typically run is that they rely on a power source. All this stuff here is pretty much powered off the main power source, which is your, which is your stator or alternator. And how that works is that um, the stator or alternator is pretty much the same thing as like a generator that you'd use at like a cabin or something. Your crankshaft rotates, makes that rotary motion, and uh, due to magnetism and electromagnetism, we were able to generate a voltage off, off your magneto. This voltage, some of it goes to like, powering your lights and all that stuff, and the other side of it goes to powering up your ignition, your ignition circuit, like for your spark. So, in a nutshell, you got your magneto, or your stator, or alternator, or whatever you want to call it. That's going to make a voltage. Then over here we got a CDI which works kind of like the brain of all the wire harness. It's where all the wires are mainly tapped into. It focuses on killing, like killing your spark if you turn the key off and stuff like that. You got your regulator which is going to basically be mainly for the battery. Regulator makes your DC voltage, helps smoothen out and uh, 
helps provide a charging a charging voltage for the battery electric start that's kind of his own simple thing we don't need to worry about that pickup coil that's your actual like pickup coil itself and uh, what else do we have here it's got the, the neutral switch and of course the ignition coil but all this circuit does is basically take a voltage coming right off your stator right off your generator and produces a spark when and at the right time based on the timing but we'll see that all down in a second well I think I see a few problems <laughs> yeah it definitely we don't have spark <laughs> we got a bunch of stuff unplugged here yeah as I was saying on the diagram I'll probably just say it again just to make sure that I hit the point home is that in here you're gonna see your stator and uh, that black wire right here that's gonna be your main should be black or black and red that's your main power wire coming off the stator and typically the green is the ground yellow is going to be for um, charging like the that's an AC tap for charging like lights and stuff like that this right here must be someone must have this wire added this is like I'd say this is definitely the neutral switch that basically just grounds ground sound to neutral so um, basically you don't when you hit the electric start button she won't start in gear unless unless it's in neutral that's usually what that's for back here that wire hey guys i am back out here in the shed again it is a rainy day out so you might hear the rain in the background but um based on the condition of the bike as you guys seen there's a lot of wires hanging off pretty much everything's unplugged i think the best way to logically uh troubleshoot something in this kind of condition is to basically um troubleshoot every component so as you can see here this is uh, the wired diagram I kind of ran through earlier it's 200E because it has the, the battery on it but um, I also went ahead there last night and uh, printed off a copy of a 200S wiring diagram I just typed it in on Google uh, 200S wiring diagram you can see this is from three wheeler world you can just get the copy of the wired diagram but you'll notice looking at these these um, two wire diagrams and comparing them. This one looks a lot more complex, of course, because you got that onboard battery, you got the, the electric start circuit and the charging circuit for the battery. This one, the 200S, 200S, um, if you're not familiar with the 200S, it doesn't have electric start, it doesn't have the push button start, and it doesn't have an onboard battery. As you can see, the circuit looks a lot more simpler. But the circuit is basically the same, like these bikes rely on the same principle we talked about with um, creating the voltage off the stator. So what I'm going to start doing is, since this is kind of the heart of the system, and if you don't have a voltage or you don't have a good stator, nothing else is really going to want to work, like your spark or um, your CDI unit. That all relies, even the headlight on the, on the 200S is all like a fully AC system. Um, you can see it doesn't have any voltage regulator which helps um, rectify the, the pulsating voltage coming off the stator and make it a nice steady smooth one 200S doesn't even have that you can see right here that's missing off the circuit so um, for explanation purposes and going forward I'm gonna test basically the same components but we're gonna focus on the main the main sparking components So yeah guys, I guess uh, I like to start on the stator because it's the heart, it creates the voltage. So we'll test the stator out here now, so I'll get a little mark next to it, you can see. Once that is uh, good, I'll put a circle or something around it, letting myself know that I have a good working stator. We'll do the same, we'll test the, we'll test the ignition coil, which is your plug wire coil, the little boot. We'll check uh, the pickup coil, which is that mechanical event sir I was talking about in a previous video we'll check that make sure we're getting the proper resistance make sure we're getting a connection over to our CDI unit we'll check our switches and we'll we should be able to narrow down why we don't have spark this circuit here is basically the same thing it just it looks a lot messier because you got your battery there you got your charging circuit you got the, the voltage regulator helping make it a smooth DC voltage but if you actually just 
take a marker or a pencil and you go through each wire and trace each wire, I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out. Okay guys, we're over here at the bike. You can see the uh, harness is still hanging off just where I left it to. So in, in here is going to be your stator, which is attached to your crankshaft, but anyways, um, you can see coming off the stator itself, there's a black wire, which is the main power wire that powers the ignition circuit. You can see there's a green, and what's that, a yellow with red. Back here, this should be normally green, but someone obviously must have replaced it. This is a neutral wire. It's just basically a ground, so if the bike is in neutral, it goes to ground. So that's all we have here, right? We'll verify with the circuit. The, the 200E. That's a yellow, yellow, and black. So you still got the three wires. The colors may change. Yellow, yellow, and black. Um, here's the 200S one. Yellow, dark green, and black. You can see how the yellow and dark green, which is pretty much the same as what we have here. The yellow and dark green is basically a tap for, um, that's just a tap for your lights. But still, they're relying on a black. The black is the power for the ignition circuit. Well guys, you can see it's certainly uh, pouring out there now. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too noisy for the video. But, um, I got my multimeter here in my hand. You can see I got it on resistance. It's on auto. You might have to set yours to a scale. This main black wire, we're gonna check the resistance of. That's the main one we're concerned with. And as well, I just wanted to point out the stators on these bikes usually don't go bad unless they're horribly mal, mal like I guess treated really bad. They're usually pretty good stators. But anyways, I got um I got my multimeter on on ohms. That's the, the little horseshoe shape there, and it's on auto. You might have to set your range. We're looking for roughly 266 uh, ohms off the black wire, so we're going to be testing the wire to ground. So, don't matter which side you plug in. I'm going to plug in the red anyways, but plug one in, one end of your multimeter into the black. The other one should go. It just touches off the ground somewhere. That's all. I touched to the engine case. Let's see if I can do this now with um with one hand. Yeah, I'm literally just trying to hold the wires together with one hand, but you can see on the stator we're getting uh, 266 ohms, which is good because we want above 200 ohms on the, on that main main uh, voltage or main power wire coming off the stator. You can also check these stators for voltages, but I'm not going to do that because um, I typically find myself that if the resistances are good and it's not shorted out internally, you're usually not going to have that much of an issue and the stator is probably going to work so as simple as that we just proved that this black wire coming off the stator is fine um, these other two wires here are for the voltage regulator like um, for charging the battery so we're not too concerned about that right now um, I'm going to check this make sure that this is a good ground anyways this is the neutral switch so okay so I still got the, the meter still on resistance you can see right there, still on the little horseshoe shape. So I got what I done just then. I uh, I plugged this black lead into one side of the neutral switch, and I just held um, held the other lead, the po the red positive, to uh, to the engine, because bas basically the engine is the ground, right? So I just verified that um, we have a path from the neutral neutral switch. I mean to say neutral switch to the ground. I got on my meter it came up as 0 0.3 ohms so that means there's virtually no resistance so that means we have a good ground so right off the bat this whole area of the bike we know is good um, what we're doing as well like when I'm using the, the resistance meter what we're doing is um, we're basically just checking how hard it is for a current or electricity to flow through a wire to solve resistance is where it's kind of the same as if you want to push water through a garden hose whatever is going to fight back is basically resistance so we verified just in that the stator has good resistance and uh, we also verified that we have a good ground for the neutral switch okay so i'll take that off my list okay guys you can see um we checked the stator now next i'm going to be checking that pickup coil which is right here 
You can see uh, under wiring it says dark green, which is typically the ground, and uh, the LY that stands for, if you look up here on the little legend, the LY stands for yellow. And it's, where's it though? Blue, blue with yellow. It's, or it could be sometimes blue with white. So we're going to check the resistances on that. I got it wrote down from the manual. Pulse generator, roughly 30 ohms. So we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to put the, the meter on resistance. I'm going to put one uh, one of my leads, like the, the black or red leads, is going to go on one of the wires. And the other one's going to go on the other wire. And we're going to check the resistance between the two wires. As long as that's close to 30 ohms, we should be in business. Okay, so you can see from the pictures on the pulse generator, we got 30 ohms. That means that this is good, that's good. So let's go ahead and, I don't know, let's maybe we'll check the check this next. <laughs> As you can see, I'm just kind of randomly uh, selecting items and we're just checking to see if it works because then we'll stick the harness together and we'll look for any breaks in the harness. So yeah, let's check this next. You can see uh, we're going to have a dark green wire, so the ignition coil is going to be grounded. We should have the wire that goes to the boot. That's fine. And what's that? That's the trigger. That's the yellow and black wire, or black with yellow, black with yellow stripe. So yep, let's uh, go check this out. This is the uh, ignition coil. Okay, guys. So this is uh, the ignition coil here. You can see this is uh, definitely some funky stuff going on. But we're still going to test this coil. We're going to verify that this works. Spark plug is there, just hanging down. Um, you can see once again. It, this is a, obviously a jumper someone added on. But once again, spark plug ignition coil is pretty simple. We got the one wire for the spark plug boot. We got the, the black and yellow, which we just seen on the diagram. And this one here is supposed to be a ground. So it looks like just a homemade uh, ground jumper. So what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna take this off the bike and we can just test this right on the bench. Okay, you can see we're testing that ignition coil. I literally just took it off the bike, um, it's only one bolt that holds this on. So we need two resistance values, we need the primary, we need the secondary. Primary is across these two pins, should be roughly uh, 0.2 ohms. And we need the secondary as well. So I'm going to do that right now, hopefully I, can, I don't think I can do this with one hand. Let's see, try it out. 0.3. Oh well, guys, we just, well, I guess I just found another problem. I just went ahead and checked the secondary from uh, going off um, spark plug blue over to the terminal. And I'm getting 11.5 uh, kilo ohms, 11.5, so it's basically 11, over 11,000. It says I should be between three to 5,000. So probably an issue with this, a lot more resistance between um, the secondary to the boot. So this might need to be changed. So that's one other thing we just checked. I'm going to put an X there because that's a um, high resistance value. So I might have to try another boot. But anyways, um, that's it. That. So I guess now we can go ahead and check all of our connections from the wire harness going over to the CDI. And then we'll check our switches. Okay, guys. Um, you can see we're starting to get some places anyways. We're not finished yet. But if we're going to get a full working harness out of all this, we got to make sure that we basically checked everything. And if we want spark back, well, we got to make sure we got a good uh, good harness going on. So, anyways, um, this is the harness that's on the bike. I'll take a little step back so you can view it a bit easier. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to verify and go off um, the proper the proper harness. I'm going to verify all the connections, all the inter-working connections, like for example that one uh, on the starter push button to uh, where it ends up over here. I'm going to verify that every cable has no breaks internally. And I'm going to do that by uh, using my multimeter. So once I've verified that this harness is good, we'll uh, check out the CDI unit, check out our switches, and go from there. But we're, we're starting to narrow things down. We're, we know we got a, a, a bad uh, ignition coil boot. So we know that this, this unit's pretty most likely bad, needs to be replaced. 
And we know that we do have a good working stator. We know our, pater, our pickup coil is good. So we are, we are getting places. So this is going to take a little bit of time, but for myself is definitely necessary because you wouldn't want to put on a harness and then have three or four wires broken internally. So yeah, uh, let's verify this harness is good. I know um, harnesses can look a bit intimidating when you see a mess, but I can kind of tell where everything's to just by looking at it already. We know that this is going to be our headlight assembly. This is going to be up here. This is um, all those wires, so all the headlight stuff. That's right here. We know the yellow and black. We just tested for that and uh, pulled this off uh, off the bike. This is spark plug boot. So that means that this plug is the CDI unit. This is for the pulser. This is coming off like a stator. That's all those wires, all those magneto wires. Back here, um, this looks like Maybe the voltage regulator, or oh, no, that's the that's the positive tap because there should be a uh, fused fused line that goes to the battery. That's that right there. Um, this is just your voltage regulator stuff, and then we got our taillight wires. So you can see the brown and green, brown and dark green. So um, with most most multimeters, if you get the the cheaper one, like a thirty dollar one, that's still fine. It'll do the job perfect. You're going to have the resistance button. This one actually has a, a continuity button, which is uh, that little symbol right here. When you click on that, the meter will beep any time you touch these together. So, you can see it beeps. So basically, any time that um, you touch the wires together, so for example, if I put it on one end of the yellow with the red stripe, and I put the other wire on Another one that's connected, as long as they're connected, it will beep. So that's what I'm going to do to trace all these wires out. Okay guys, I just uh, went through that harness and I'm pretty happy with most of the wire connections with this harness. Not in perfect shape, but the, the bikes are about four years old, so <laughs> we got to expect here and there that they're going to age and sometimes end up in worse condition. doesn't mean that it can't be restored. But um, anyways, I'm gonna start putting the harness on. So we know we know like um, what side goes where. Like I got the, the back side put in place for now. I just temporarily put some uh, quick connectors to make uh, connections for the pulsar. So now I'm just gonna plug in wires. Basically, I'm gonna match the colors, plug stuff back in, and uh, we'll fit on a ignition coil. There's a, a Chinese coil there in the bag, so um, I'll try that out, we'll wire that up. But yeah, for now I am just plugging stuff in. So I literally just plugged in the pulse, pulsar wires. That's the, the green and the blue with the yellow. Just plugged them right in. I'm gonna have to move everything out of place, of course. And um, But for now, we're just gonna test and see if we can get spark to this main harness. That's the goal. Uh, certainly pouring out now <laughs> so pulsar is connected as I was just saying and uh, you can literally see that the harness flows where it has to go this uh, red and green I was wondering what this was for again for a second and then I remembered um, I remember that that's actually for the neutral switch red and green I know that um, that's your push button start circuit so uh, the reason why it comes down here is because your push button start won't actually be able to actuate unless the bike is in neutral, so that's your neutral switch. I got the black coming off the stator connected, that's uh, the main power for the ignition system. And then this connector here just clicks in together, this is uh, the voltage tap for your lights and stuff like that. So the stator is almost connected, with the exception I just got to plug this last wire in. That's connected. Uh, I got the CDI box plugged in. So we'll plug in the voltage regulator circuit and the solenoid if it runs. I don't know if this bike has a solenoid, but nope, it doesn't have a solenoid. So I guess we'll just plug plug in what we can back here. <laughs> um, we'll get this uh, plugged in as well. This is the 12 volt. It's supposed to be a fuse lead, so I'll probably stick a fuse on and see if we can get a temporary battery somewhere. I'm not sure if I have one at the moment, but we'll, we'll get everything all plugged in 
and I'll let you guys know in a second or two what I got done here. So uh, for testing, you can see I just got a random uh, cheap Chinese uh, ignition coil here. I'm not going to hook anything up permanent or anything yet, because I want to see what the guy wants to do, if he wants to buy a proper foil to put on it or whatnot. So uh, I just got a hung here because it doesn't fit in uh, the bolt holes. I just got a little cable tie just hanging uh, the Chinese ignition coil. And it only takes two wires. It has two wires hanging off it. It has a ground and it has the black and yellow. The black and yellow goes to literally black and yellow, same color. Ground is going to go to green. And for now, for my temporary test, I'm just going to tape the, tape the green to the green. Just tape them together and uh, tape that connection together. I just want to test this out temporarily because, uh, like I was saying, I want to make sure that I know what he wants to do. If he wants me to cut all these connectors or if he wants to actually buy the proper, the proper ignition coil to go on the bike. So that's it. I'm also going to add an extra ground. I'm going to get a, like an alligator clip or like a piss lead. Clip onto this and uh, clip on somewhere nice and clean, maybe to the frame or maybe to the engine block. So we'll get an, we'll make sure that that ignition coil is properly grounded. So so far, ignition coil basically done. Except I got to tape the wires together temporarily. This is connected. Stator stuff is connected. So we got all the headlight stuff and all these wires to figure out. And it's just the battery, um, the 12 volts for the switch power. And then we got the voltage regulator stuff and solenoid stuff, all that back here. So we'll deal with that in a second. So we'll finish up here and then uh, we'll test out these wires down here and go from there, guys. Okay, guys, so we basically got a lot of things tested here now. Tested all this stuff. No, I keep repeating myself. <laughs> Um, check the connections. So now we're going to check the switches. So we'll go back here again to um, the proper wire diagram. There's uh, the lighting switch and the engine stop switch and ignition switch. So we're going to basically do the same thing. It tells us what wires, like for example, with off, it says uh, what wires should be connected in the off position, what one should be open. Same with these. So I'm going to do the same thing as I've been doing. I'm just going to do use the continuity and just verify, like plug one lead in and the other lead in. And I'm going to verify that um, they're connected when they're supposed to be based on the colors. Just follow the colors again. And I'll let you guys know very shortly now what the switches turn out to be like. Okay guys, just going to do an update on the, the, the no, no spark troubleshooting. I got it all figured out now. Still got to hook up up this um, kill switch up here but I got all the connections made temporarily like we got a um, get the ignition switch wired in got another video on how to wire an ignition switch so if you need any help with that I got all my temporary connectors I got a Chinese CDI box plugged in which is the same pins same pretty much same thing as a if you go and type it on eBay a replacement Chinese uh, CDI for a big red or anything like that, or or an ATC or ATV, you'll you'll find these little Chinese knockoffs. That's plugged in. We tested this. We got the resistance. We know the stator is good. I uh, tested out the coil. It's got a temporary Chinese coil plugged in. And watch how cool this is. Since we just troubleshooted us how to get spark back, we got a headlight. Give her a little pull. Take no old bike with me. <laughs> so we did it guys. We got the spark back to a bike that um, hasn't ran in a long time. And it hasn't ran because it has numerous issues. We uh, tested all the components, went through it, every wire, and of course we got our back running again. You can see these connectors are unplugged. One is just uh, the voltage regulator. The other one is the solenoid for electric start, which you wouldn't really need for troubleshooting spark. These wires back here are for the taillight. Sick guys, we did it. Another bike solve. Another chance to learn. 
check out a few more things. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed the video. And hopefully this can help you if you got a Honda that's not running at home.